Okay. Let me get a paintbrush here. I'm going to get a fairly good size paintbrush for the... What I'm going to start out with here. Commonly, I would imagine these back, this back panel here, these electric panels, were probably uh, gray of some court, kind. But I've also seen them in green, or uh, kind of uh, institutional green, if you will. Something that only General Motors could have come up with, I'm sure, when they made these units to begin with. So we're going to start that away. This is, again, I'm using military paints to do this with. I do have steel and I do have, you know, rust and some things like that, but we're not going to worry about uh, those colors just yet. Alrighty. So much for that. That's done. Hey, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? Gee, I wonder what happened to all my... Oh, there's a paper towel down there. I'm going to paint the floor a nice light uh, ghost ship gray, if you will. It's kind of a naval color, I think. Might just be a primer gray, but... Eh, flat white? No, that's not it. Ah, here it is. Uh, flat gray. <laughs> As if there's a gloss gray, I guess there is. Okay. I hate when that happens. Enamels tend to do that a lot. This is why I don't like to buy big jars of enamel, because they have a tendency to, to glue themselves quite shut. Get a nice, oh yeah, that's more of a battleship gray, all right. Yeah, when you all see these, maybe you all let me know if I put, ought to put an engineer and, and, and uh, put a full engine crew in this engine. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Just about done doing the gray. Now see, unlike the old uh, GSB rail limited uh, interior kits, which were all metal parts, which, you know, if you build them up right, they look great all right. But boy, what a pain in the butt to put together. And then, what a pain in the butt to paint. Okay, now that I'm finishing up, I'm finishing up a little steel. You know, one thing should be noted, the more detailed painting you do on a given unit, the more it tends to, the, the detail of a given item tends to stand out. And uh, it, it does, it makes, it makes quite a difference. I realize that a lot of people don't want to go to that kind of trouble, and I understand that. For me, it's uh, something that I like doing. It's something that I like having look right. Uh, especially on the exterior of the locomotive. I feel that it's very important. But if you're going to have an interior, you know, you're wasting your time if you can't see it. And enjoy it. And enjoy the fact that it's there. Sure, for some people, just knowing that it's there is good enough. For me, I've got to be able to enjoy that interior and be able to uh, be able to view it. And yeah, I could put an engine crew in there, and I might yet. I've, I've got some unpainted figures I can set in there. I could set three of them in there if I want to. Probably wouldn't set more than two. But I could set three of them in there if I wanted to. Okay, now I'm in the process of starting to paint the seats. Let 
and make those a nice light, kind of a leathery colored brown. I didn't know they actually had three seats in, a, in an F7. I guess it's completely possible they'd have a place for a brakey to sit up front, but if you know if they're running multiple units, why would you have three seats in one when you could when you could just as easily have pull up a chair in a B unit or even a, a following A unit? Almost there. Daisy. Don't want to clean it with the MEK, do we? <laughs> I do get confused once in a while. You know, I use lacquer thinner to, to clean all of my paints. Whether I'm painting with enamels or lacquers, it doesn't matter. I use lacquer thinner. Uh, it just seems to work better for my purposes. Okay, now a little bit of flat white. I know I got some flat black here, so there it is. Flat white is going to be the color of the uh, the dashboard, basically what we would call a dashboard in an automobile. Like I said, it would look fine sitting in there in its neutral gray plastic. However, for those of us who know, it's still neutral gray plastic. Okay. You see that? Now that, that's the key to detail painting as you paint a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you clean out the brush, maybe change brushes like I'm fixing to do now, and you go on to the next, next final detail to paint. And then, you know, before you know it, you're done, you're ready to let it dry. Okay, to get this interior to fit in a little bit better, I'm going to have to trim this thing at the top here so it'll go around that window glazing. The trimming doesn't really have to be that pretty, you just got to get it to where you don't want to break it, you don't want to tear it up. But it does need to be in there. Okay. Okay, need to... And just a little more trim there, huh? Just a little bit more. Yep. Well, I'm running into black plastic underneath that. Huh. Now, ain't that a trip? I guess the thing was already painted. <laughs> Primer gray. How nice of them. All righty. I've got the interior in. I know it'd probably be uh, impossible to see it, but it is in there. Let me see if I can zoom 